So much dating advice is based on the psychology of young, the younger demographic. And what I'm particularly talking about for those of us in midlife, which I say midlife is after baby making years and before retirement. So roughly the ages of 42 to 69. Um, I think a lot of dating advice is based on that 20 or 30 year old emotional demographic and biological demographic. And what I mean by biological, I'm talking about testosterone and estrogen and those things that cause us to choose, well, beyond the, the, the chemical component, but choosing partners to make babies with versus those of us in midlife. And why midlife is so different and what's going to keep a man's attention when you're over 40 is recognizing that we have a significant population of emotionally wounded people, particularly because they've gone through a divorce, okay? And divorce is a very emotionally traumatic experience. It's the unraveling of the tapestry of a life you might have had with another person. So I know if you're watching this video, you chose it because of its title, Want to Keep His Attention, Do This with Men Over 40. I think you have to really gain clarity on who you are beyond the surface of a relationship. And let me give you an example. See, most of us have been an indoctrinated in the belief that chemistry equals relationship success. And for those of us who've been around the block a few times, and I mean we've had multiple relationships in our lifetime, we have learned, and I'm, I'm speculating if you have learned this, but we have learned that chemistry in and of itself doesn't equal relationship success. And as I said in the beginning of the broadcast, most dating advice is based on a younger demographic. It's all based on that initial attraction. And actually, a lot of dating advice is based on unhealthy attachment style, unhealthy way of approaching relationship. Books like The Rules are all designed to trigger those unhealthy components within another human being that cause them to temporarily chase you, to temporarily show that they have attention with you. And that's why I'm not a big proponent of it. Now, I said temporarily, folks, men, okay, you've heard the narrative, men love the hunt and men love the chase. Well, I really want you to sit back and really determine what does hunt mean to a man? What does it mean to chase someone? Do you honestly believe that men walk around going, I'm hunting a relationship. I'm hunting a relationship. I'm going to chase a relationship. Do you honestly believe that men operate this way? Because if you do, you have been sold a fantasy. You have been sold a narrative. Now, that's not to suggest that there isn't a significant percentage of men who, excuse me, excuse my slurping, there isn't a significant percentage of men who have a long-term mating strategy. And what a long-term mating strategy is, it's a man who clearly wants a life mate. He wants a life mate in his life. And he's going to approach the process much more pragmatic than attraction chemistry equals relationship success. The challenge is most everybody has a short-term mating strategy and what they, what that, okay, so let me differentiate between short-term and long-term mating strategy. A short-term mating strategy is I'll believe it when I see it. I'll believe it when I see it. I'll believe it when I see it. I heard this from Wayne Dyer. A long-term mating strategy is when I believe it, I will see it. When I believe it, I will see it. In other words, when I believe I want a long-term commitment, I will then see it instead of the narrative, well, when I see it, I'll believe it. Because when someone has a short-term mating strategy, they're operating from the premise that chemistry equals relationship success. And what, what men do in those early stages to get your attention to chase, they are rather romantic. I know many of you feel like, oh my God, Jonathan, I have such an amazing connection with him. We have this intense connection. It's like I've never experienced in my life. We talk about all these deep things with each other. He's giving me so much attention. I'm going to borrow a quote that I heard from Matthew Hussey. He said, attention 
doesn't equal intention. Attention doesn't equal attention. You see, here's the thing. There is such a wounded population of human beings after I remember I said divorce, the unraveling of the tapestry. We have such a significant percentage of wounded human beings that are thirsty for attention, affection, connection with another human being. But that doesn't mean that they're capable of leaning into a healthy, happy relationship. So one of the things I espouse is, let me reframe that. I've observed most women have a broken picker. It's one of the reasons why I created my private coaching. You see this link right here? To schedule a, this is to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. There's links below as well. What I focus on is discernment. But discernment begins on, on the following things I'm about to share with you that actually keeps a emotionally healthy man's attention. You see, you could be making all this effort with the wrong person, it's not gonna work. What I'm about to share only works for emotionally grown up men with a long-term mating strategy. And one of the things I teach you is how to determine a man's, emo gauge a man's emotional maturity through a series of personalized questions we help create for you. So again, if you want some support with that, check out the links below. So what do you need to do to keep his attention? What do you need to do for a man to genuinely invest in you? Okay. And as I said before, a lot of men are winging it. Well, first, instead of focusing on the guy, focus on the relationship you want. In other words, have clarity on the type of relationship you want. Instead of asking, now, by the way, I'm a big proponent of asking men what type, what, what, what does a relationship look like for you? What does commitment look like for you? And ask them to describe it. So for example, and you're more than welcome to borrow, borrow what I'm about to share, okay? I clearly know the type of relationship I'm looking for. I'm looking for a relationship where we spend three or four days and nights a week together, doing shared activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends, traveling together, teamwork building skills, both in our personal and our professional life, intimacy, both physical and emotional intimacy that leads to either moving in together or getting married. Do you see how I've created a framework of what it looks like? There's no ambiguity there. Now, the details aren't listed there of actually how that looks like. What hobbies do we share? I'm going to share a quick story. I met a woman who was totally into gin rummy. And, um, and on our second date, she pulled out a deck of cards and said, do you play gin rummy? And I hadn't played in years, so we began playing. And we're very competitive, and she was better than me, so I kept trying harder and harder and harder to beat her. And then we took the deck of cards with us when we went to a, a restaurant. We actually sat at the bar and we played. And every time we met for a date, we always played cards. It was actually something fun and engaging for us. And while the relationship didn't work out, I was like, so I, th this particular hobby I got attached to and I got, and actually we remain friends and occasionally we get together and we play, a, play some gin rummy together. Okay. My point is, is, these are the building blocks to get a man to want to invest in you when you're both have a shared hobby, a shared activity, a shared um, interest with one another. It makes you want to keep coming back for more. And I, I recognize that didn't work for other reasons, but we had this thing that we wanted to do together. Now, I want to also help you recognize that in, I said, instead of focusing on the guy, Focus on the type of relationship you want, but more importantly, recognize that while chemistry is important, shared values, lifestyles that are blendable and integratable with one another, and as I said earlier, emotional maturity are huge components to relationship success. Listen. I'm not, listen, I recognize that I've said this before. There is a sea of dysfunctionality out, dysfunctionality out there when it comes to dating, mating, or relating. 
But I want you to know, you can put the odds in your favor. I witnessed so many happy couples. I have a community of friends, some of which have, you know, their relationship is less than 10 years old. And a significant percentage of them met their partners through online dating sites. So, you know, whether we like it or not, that happens to be the number one place most people are meeting is through some sort of online connection, whether it's a dating site, whether it's social media. So, um, so just recognize that a, a great relationship is absolutely possible for you. When you've done the individual work, it's one of the reasons why I'm such a big proponent of everyone getting my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help, Spiritual Work. There's a link below to get a copy of my book. And following the principles that I've laid out for you and what I'm laying out for you today. Now, another way to get his attention, instead of expect, this is number two, instead of expecting a man uh, who proves himself, understand that a relationship is a two-lane street. In other words, making effort and see if he meets the effort you make. Now, I'm not suggesting, by the way, a woman was recently asking me, how do I not look desperate? Well, you make a little bit of effort and then you see if he meets you with commensurate effort. And then he should be making effort. And then you meet him with commensurate effort. When a woman makes effort, now I reckon, then, then I'm going to tell you, for me, a woman who makes effort gets my attention. When a woman doesn't make effort, I don't have the same attention. Now, let me be clear. There are a significant percentage of men, their effort is breadcrumbing. Their effort is very minimal. I'm not here to even remotely suggest making effort that isn't commensurate to the effort they make. But I know you've been sold a narrative. Well, Jonathan, I'm just supposed to sit back in my feminine energy and let the guy lead. Because again, remember this traditional advice you've heard? It doesn't work for midlife men. It doesn't work for people who have had, you know, hurt in their life. It's about being teammates with one another. It's about treating it as a two-lane street. If you making effort that you want a relationship, he needs to make effort he wants to make a relationship, but it's commensurate effort with one another. What does that look like? It might look like he's called you up and asked you on a date and you call him up and say, hey, I'd like to take you out and treat you tonight. That's making effort. It means initiating a text message. It means initiating a phone call. It's not always expecting men to lead. But Jonathan, I am told that if a man wants me, he'll chase me. Men are scared too. Men are fearful of getting hurt. We the the commence when a woman makes effort, we're like, oh yes, she wants me. I'm gonna make effort. And when you, he makes effort, you're going, oh, he wants me. And you should want to make effort too. Number three, show him you are a playful, flirty person. Um, I think this is somewhat lacking in women today. I think a lot of women have been so deeply hurt and wounded that they've lost their playful fun side. I'm smiling because I recently connected with a woman through Instagram. It's not it, it's not going to turn into anything romantic because there's 3,000 miles of distance. I mean, it might. Who, who knows? I mean, you know what? I don't want to close that door, okay? There's anything possible. But right off the bat, our phone call was fun. She's fun. She's playful. She's silly. She's got a great sense of humor. Makes me want to keep talking to this person. Folks, I'm, I'm, I've noticed a lot of women so deeply hurt and wounded that they've lost their joy. And that saddens me, that truly saddens me that you've lost your play, you've lost your joy, you've lost your sense of humor. And I understand it feels as though it might have been beaten out of you. I get that. It's very easy to go down a narrative of being bitter, jaded, frustrated, upset, disappointed. It's very easy to go down that rabbit hole. But I'm gonna tell you something, the difference between, does anyone remember Winnie the Pooh, Tigger, or Eeyore? Which do you want to be? I'm going to tell you, Tigger is a lot more fun to want to spend time with than Eeyore. And yet, I have a great deal of, of, of empathy for Eeyore. 
And I have a great deal of empathy for those of you that have turned into an Eeyore. And by the way, there's just as many Eeyore men out there. But fun, playfulness, silliness, that, that, wants, that keeps a man's attention. This is what, I mean, for an emotionally grown up man, for emotionally wounded man, he wants to wallow in the pain and you're wallowing in the pain and you guys are just bonding in this trauma of pain, which will implode or explode at some point in the future. Now, one thing I've observed, this is number four, independence and self-love. I'm told, I hear this, you know, just give a man space and, you know, just give him his space. You know, men needed space. How does this relate to self-love? You know, having your own curated life, having your own uh, independence, having your own sovereignty, having your own interdependence is very attractive to a man. I think it's rather important that couples have healthy time apart from each other and not coming from a place of dependency or desperateness. And when a woman operates from her place of sovereignty and a man operates from their place of sovereignty, which means their power, it's okay to have space from one another. It's okay for you to have space, just as it's okay that he has space because that represents a healthy space of independence and a healthy space of self-love. By the way, self-love is self-worth, self-confidence, self-reliance, self-esteem, self-respect. Those are all self-love words. And I'm here to encourage everyone to lean into their sovereignty, into their selves far more. Because this isn't really about gaining a man's attention. This title is maybe designed to get you to click, but quite frankly, it's all an empowerment conversation. When you are empowered in your life, you become a magnetic attractor for what you want. And, and I want you to put the odds in your favor. I am in a belief that every single one of you has the power. Most There are so many women who will, will most likely not find a relationship. There's a lot of men that won't find a relationship either. It's just because they're not willing to put the, do the work. This isn't for the faint of heart. Real personal development work, self-help and spiritual work is not for the faint of heart. You have to be you have to be you have to be really determined to go I want to live an empowered life. And within empowerment this fifth and final share to keep his attention is through vulnerability, expressing your needs. Expressing your needs creates emotional connection. When you lead by example, by making a request for your needs, by expressing and making a request for your needs from a healthy place. Folks, I witnessed so many women who stuck their voice. Chapter one of my book, speak your truth, do it with kindness. Your truth is the vulnerable parts of who you are. Find out what your needs are. Determine I, if Each one of you have your own needs. Do you have a need for more connection with him? Do you have a need for more verbal expression with him? Do you have a need for doing more things than Netflix and chill? Express what your needs are. Just do it in a compassionate way. If you haven't read the book, Nonviolent Communication by Marshall Rosenberg, this is a great book to tap into your vulnerable, to, okay. Chapter nine in my book, if it's sincere and from the heart, you can't say the wrong thing to the right person. Learn good communication skills so you can express your needs in a way that will actually open him up. Because when you open him up, he'll want this. This will keep his attention. He will want you above all else when you operate in the dynamic I just shared with everyone. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. If it is, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Post a comment below. As always, if you find value in my videos, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos. And if you want to connect with me, there's links below to schedule a discovery call with me, to join my group called Midlife Love Mastery, to follow me on Instagram, to get the books I recommend and my dating vows all listed below.
And I'm going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, give myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Barrick of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, a teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now. Bye. Bye.